Harry Fox. There's Cash. You're sitting right under Castro, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've heard. Oh, it's uh, Beaches. Oh, my God. We're in the beaches with Dallas. Conte. Conte. <laughs> Very fancy. So tell us about you. I'm a, a drummer and an artist. Um, these days I'm working full-time as a tattoo artist and an illustrator. Um, I recently was accepted into American Illustration, which is an annual publication of uh, illustrators, artists, works that have been done over the past year or so. Um, and basically it's a juried panel and the jury decides whether, you know, who, uh, who gets in. Yeah, who gets in. It's basically yeah, like, right. I'm in. Which it's, is, like, how many got in this year? Uh, it's in the hundreds, it? but it's throughout uh, North and South America. I've been accepted before into different publications, but this is like the big one that I've tried and failed over and over again to get into. And it's basically like, I don't know, art students everywhere consider it to be the industry standard of like legitimacy. And this year I wasn't even, I haven't applied in like, it's been years since I even last thought to apply again. Um, but on a whim, I just kind of like, whatever, I'm not going to get it. But I'll just submit this piece, this painting. But it was accepted. Um, it's going to be in their online uh, catalog, not in the physical book. And what form of media was that painting? It's a painting. It's a mixed media, ink, watercolor um, painting of a hand. Dramatic. Yeah. I can show them in the video. Yeah, awesome. Cool. Yeah. Congratulations, Fish. Thank you. <laughs> but, um, that's the reason, that's kind of the reason for this interview because um, a few things have happened in some camps of yours, of your former camps and things like that. Some things have happened and I, I thought this would be a good time. You need the support of your community, your former band maybe. And why don't you tell us about your recent past music? Um, so most recently I was the drummer for the Antiquates. What I would be most well known for as a musician is being the drummer for the Annie Queens. Um, but um, I departed from that band, and then pandemic happened immediately. So it's been a while since I've really been integrated into the music scene. But you said you said you do some small stuff, like maybe even here. Yeah, I uh, Castro's. I uh, Castro. <laughs> I love Castro's. Um, yeah, me and uh, my husband, Jimmy Buxton, is a musician as well, and I'll back him on drums when he needs drums. And uh, we play here um, fairly often. It's been a while since we last played here, but uh, we used to have a monthly residency. Um, well, we're probably going to play here pretty soon again, but uh, I, it's a small place, but I love it. People come here and expect music and love music, and uh, it's always a good time in this place. Small yes, always. always. Yeah. Do you do have a gig coming up? May 26th, did you say? Uh, May 26th. Um, I may or may not make an appearance on drums, but uh, uh, D.B. Buxton will be playing, and it's going to be at the No No Room. Um, I hope this is edited by then. Edit out all of the uh, audience. <laughs> audience. <laughs> <laughs> so there's more. The, there's more to the painting kind of story, and I hope I didn't miss anything about the art, the, uh, the art story. But we can go back to it. So about the Andy Queens, there was something more that you did with that band, which was smart. Um. So the album cover was the um this thing. This thing. This is an inside joke from the band. It's fucking rock and roll. <laughs> and so we wanted that to be on the album cover. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, we would just do that to each other all the time, and uh, we thought it would be cool as an album cover, so I drew it up, and uh, I, I'm pretty sure I used my own hands as the model for the drawing, um, and I, yeah, it's simple, basic album. What's, what's the album called? Uh, it's self-titled, Andy Queens. That's the self-titled album? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I so love you doing... Were the, you were the drummer for how long? Uh, for about three years. And the artist for the same three years? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we've worked with a bunch of different people, obviously, but um, the that was my main contribution was the that logo, the album cover. Now let's talk about a little bit about your history. What were your main influences that got you into that? Well, um, 
I was interested in music for a few years before I was interested in drumming. When I was a little kid, like eight or nine years old, I was obsessed with the idea of playing guitar. And I begged my parents for a guitar, and I got it, and I tried, and I just didn't enjoy playing it. I didn't like practicing, so that kind of just went nowhere. But um, in school, when I was about 11, 12 years old, I was assigned drums in band class, and it just felt right. Like it just, I kind of picked it up pretty quickly, and I just became obsessed with drums. What grade was it? Seven. Yeah. So my parents bought me a drum kit, put me in lessons, and they put me with the best teacher I probably could have ever asked for, which is Frank Russell, who you know, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's. Uh, yeah. He, hi, Frank. Frank, totally. Frank's daughter is in music, too. Is she? I think his daughter is. Yeah, he has a daughter. She put something out recently. Oh, really? I know that um, they've done stuff together before. I'm pretty That's sure. cool. Yeah. Okay, so how do you know Frank? Um, I was put into drum lessons, and Frank was my teacher. That was it? You just, mm -hmm. Did you live there? Uh, yeah, we, uh, at the time, my family lived in Ajax, and uh, we went to um, this place in Pickering, Legend Music, where him and uh, his colleague Jim, they were in a band called Roadhouse. It was like a blues cover band, bar band. Um, who later Frank would let me sit in for. He would like. Really? Yeah, no, oh, it's, Frank was the, the most supportive and influential person in music that. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. That's a great story. Mm -hmm. What well, musical did you like bands? What bands did you like? Well. Other than Roadhouse. <laughs> Frank introduced me to Frank Zappa. Oh, that's cool. Which totally blew Jimmy my. Fazio. Oh my god. See, that's. Part of the reason why he was such a big influence on my musical journey was he introduced me to like Frank Zappa and King Crimson and Mad Vision Orchestra and all these bands that I had no idea music could do that. So yeah, I started really getting like nerding out over music really hard. So to this day, Frank Zappa is probably my favorite musician of all time. And you realize that I'm going to have to say that that's kind of weird for you. <laughs> Tell me about <laughs> Oh yeah, no, it's you know. You know, I think you're weird, but you're weird, right? <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why you're in the season premiere. Am I the season premiere? Yeah. All right. It's no pressure or anything. <laughs> the comeback episode is beautiful. That oh, I uh, I appreciate the symbolism. Well, hey, you know, like I said, I was a little bit nervous. It showed my anxiety. I'm glad. I'm always nervous 24 hours a day, so I appreciate you working with me. <laughs> There's lots to talk about with you. We've yep. got more. We've got influences. We've got favorite bands. You've already said Frank Zappa. So, what what was the turning point to punk? Um. Well, it's funny. Like I, punk was never my preferred genre in terms of I don't know musical influences. But I've always identified with just the general attitude of punk. I feel like punk. It doesn't have to be limited to punk rock or one specific genre. You can have a punk uh, slant on whatever you're doing. And that's kind of um, what drives me generally. It's just to slam. slam and be weird and, uh, you know, do whatever you do uh, without shame. And, uh, you know, I think it's important. So I kind of fell into the punk rock thing because I'm... I'm a rock drummer. I've always even, I don't know, I can never get away from the overly heavy foot and the um, playing too loud, like it's kind of a thing I fall into. So naturally I kind of fell into uh, playing loud, aggressive music. <laughs> yeah. You know I shared Sorry Babe earlier, right? Yes, yeah, I saw that. So, from, mm -hmm. uh, from the Bovine show, that, that was the album release party for the second album? Maybe? Was it? That, that was the first album. Was that the first album? Yeah. Well, there was an album, an EP before that, I guess, with Mary. Yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. And uh, it's always been good. And it's still good. And, and that care, that uh, Baylor Fest, Ian DeSau was on the, the guitar. Yeah. Program. It's such a great scene. Like it's yeah, there's a ton of uh, community support, which I think is really good. Within that band or other bands, what have been your favorite places to play? Favorite places to play? Uh, in recent years, here for sure, Castro's is probably my favorite place to play in the whole city these days. That's great. Just, uh, it's like a relic from another time, 
when things were less shitty for the music community. <laughs> Am I allowed to swear? <laughs> um, yeah, people love music here. I love playing here. Uh, with the Andy Queens, we've had a lot of good shows at uh, Cherry Cola's when that's still a thing. I love playing there. Um, the bovine's always fun. Um, yeah, within the city, those are probably. I did. Um, in 2019, well, yep, we did the East Coast of the U.S. and then um, we did a uh, European bus tour for uh, we are opening, we are supporting uh, the Creep Show, and that was probably the peak of my musical career so far. It was uh, traveling around Europe in a tour bus. Uh, playing rock and roll, which was, I'm really lucky that they uh, <laughs> let me do that with them. That's great. Yeah. Favorite city? Uh, like, in general? Berlin is really cool. Yeah. Berlin. Um, Montreal. Obviously, I have to stomp headquarters. Um, Boofs, before the next week, is a really good venue. Um, yeah. I'm just a, a drummer, pretty much. And Why don't you maybe tell us what you do daytime uh, or nighttime or whatever time? <laughs> uh, pretty much all the time these days. I, uh, I'm a full-time tattoo artist. I work just down the street from here at Vision Seeker Studio. And uh, I'm a tattoo artist. I do illustrative tattoos, mostly black work. Um, yeah, all types of shit. Um, I love it. It's my favorite job I've had ever. It's my career, and I'm really lucky to be able to do it every day. Um, but that being said, I do miss music, and I miss being in bands. And I'm trying to carve out more time to uh, get back on the drums and figure out a way to integrate music into my life. Because being in a band and being an artist of that kind, it's really similar because you get out of it whatever you put into it so it's easy to get sucked all the way into either one which is you know to put all your energy in so that you have a good product exactly so and yeah. your, your art is amazing though so you do it on the skin and what what took it from the paper to the skin um happenstance uh I've always really liked tattoos I've always loved getting tattooed oh, so um nice. and um, it's something I'd considered ever since I was in high school. I, that's when the, the show Miami Ink started going on TV, and I would watch it and be like, I could do that, I'd love to do that. And I went over to all the tattoo shops in town, and I was showing them my portfolio, but I was like 15, so they are like, get out of here, you're 15. <laughs> and so I kind of lost that idea until later. Um, I was in the right place, right time. A buddy of mine who owns this shop down the street offered me an apprenticeship, and that was that. Yeah. Well, that's great. That's like, was it always kind of geared for the shift to skin? Did not, you always think of putting something up? Not really, no. I had to kind of learn that later because, I mean, uh, I love working with graphite and charcoal and kind of like soft media. Whereas with tattooing, you have to make everything rigid lines and really kind of high contrast. So I had to. That's a change. Yeah. Okay. So that was a challenge, but um, it's nowadays it's kind of um, I'm taking from each medium and mixing and matching them. So I'll do like different skills. Yeah, it's transferable skills. Uh, I, I have noticed because some of your art is more line and shape. Yeah, that's directly a... As opposed to like shaded. Like this is a very good shaded. Yeah, well did this... Did you do that yourself? No, um, my buddy did this tattoo. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did you do any of your own? Uh, I did, but they're on my uh, legs. <laughs> I'm not going to bring my foot all the okay. way up there. Yeah. Did you mention all your favorite people? Um, <clears throat> I have a lot of favorite people. I don't know. Uh, you can go into the list. Yeah. If you're getting the, the Juno Award, because we don't have Grammys, <laughs> let's say you get a Grammy. Yeah. Forget the Juno. Who's on the thank you list? On the thank you list, my friends and family, my uh, brother, who is no longer with us, who was my biggest artistic influence, I'd say. Um, that's okay. Um, my husband. Um, yeah. Other teachers? Yeah. Um, 
I did take instruction for a while from, uh, do you know Alexis von Craven? He plays with Moxie nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, for a while, a little later That's on. Heavy stuff. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Later into my, uh, probably when I was around 20, I kind of went back into lessons because I wanted to freshen up my abilities and he uh, he helped me a lot we did some sessions and, oh that's cool yeah yeah I think I put something out there yeah tell us about the future of the music scene well I think it's not looking good <laughs> <laughs> um, I would love for people to uh, start cultivating their own communities again and start giving a shit about something they're actually passionate about instead of worrying about what other people might like or what might make them famous or what might make them money. I think it's important that there's... I would love to see more DIY venues pop up. I'd love to see more rehearsal spaces again. The death of the rehearsal factory was kind of a big symbolic thing in my heart. Um, I think we're kind of going backwards, and I think we need to go forwards. I think we need to. This is all really big, but uh, I don't know. I just want to see people uh, putting their hearts and enthusiasm into music in a way that isn't focused on monetization or um, getting. I don't know. Some kind of recognition out of it. Just love to see some more heart and soul in the music community. So that's good, that's like the uh, individual. Right now, I mean, the government uh, support is kind of the only thing that's helping uh, local bands get anywhere. Um, so, you know, I think it's a good thing. Um, I don't know, it seems like the, the pool is really small of bands that end up uh, really winning those grants and getting that support, and I don't know why that is, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's do a highlight on the gift thing. Oh, God, okay. Because this, I saw this and I thought it was you, and, and really, I'm glad you like it. The, the crazy thing is, this sticker was on it. It's so weird. And I thought that would be offensive, but of course not to Dallas. This is the most thoughtful thing. Someone has given me in recent years. <laughs> I don't know what to put in it, but if anyone has, we have to be really thoughtful about that. Yeah, we have to think long and hard. I really love this. Thank you. <laughs> So, yeah, I don't always give a gift, but it does help me with things. I have something to talk about. So, Alice, thanks for being on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you, Billy. I really appreciate being on your show. Musicians and bars getting here. Dallas Conte, drummer, spectacular artist, tattooist. I think I might get a tattoo today. What do you think? I might take another beer. I might not. <laughs> I think you should. Thank you. Thank you, Billy. <laughs>